Dear Father in heaven, we are so grateful to be here at the council table with those fine people and grateful to be able to serve together and to be able to take care of the <coughs> town matters. We pray for thy wisdom to be there with us on this day as we discuss important capital matters and uh, be able to make sense of all that would be presented to us. And we pray, Father, for all those who are unwell and uh, wish them well. And we say this thing humbly in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, so today is uh, the 25th of uh, February. It's 5 o'clock. And we want to thank the media, Corey McCarthy for Channel 32. Thank you for being here. We have a delegation. We have uh, Barton Atwood there. So we're happy to have you in a second once we approve the agenda. So we call the meeting to order. And uh, are there any other additions to the agenda that need to be considered? You have a, a revised agenda from the First copy that was given on to uh, given to you. Yeah, I added the uh, Joseph Scout delegation later on. Okay, so you have that, and you have the CEO report that has been added. Oh, also, mine doesn't show it, but I'm okay with uh, that. You don't have it showing up. No. Maybe you want to kind of refresh your your agenda. All right, so those are not additions. This is a regular. The regular agenda. I just wanted to make sure that you had it. Uh, under confidential, we're going to talk a little bit about golf course. The, okay, good. All right, okay. I'm good. Okay, let me go. I'll make a motion right. to uh, approve the agenda. Okay, all in favor? Thank you very much. All right, we have a delegation. Uh, Mr. Atwood, a director of infrastructure services is going to talk to us regarding lead in water or lead pipes sure. issues. Thank you, and the new legislation. I'm happy to be here with you today. Um, last year, I guess this all developed, what brought it to attention is the incident in Flint, Michigan. Yeah. Brought a lot of attention to lead in the water. What caused the lead in that water is that they switched their source water, and the Flint River was a little more corrosive, and it caused corrosion in the pipes, and, and lead leached into their water quite significantly, causing a lot of problems. So with that, um, Canada has changed their, what is called their MAC, or their maximum acceptable <clears throat> concentration level, which has been reduced by half. It used to be 10 micrograms per liter, now it's five micrograms per liter. So with that, <clears throat> they also have changed the point of where we have to test that and where we have to um, ensure that levels are below that point, and that is at the, the resident tap not just in our water mains, but at the tap. So we have to ensure that the health and safety of the citizens are being adhered to. So with that, we have to um, determine a few things which, we, which you want to decide to do with um, going about our lead, getting the lead out program is what they call it. So we need to monitor the lead levels in town we need to investigate and find out how many lead services that we might have. And there's also, um, that is the first phase of it. The second phase is once we find the levels of lead in homes and residences, then we have to start instigating phase two, which is point of use filters and education helping the citizens realize what they can do to keep lead out of their lines. Um, and also the uh, replacement of some plumbing in homes. 
Not just old homes, but newer homes will have lead in them, in them as well because of the um, lead solder that used to be years ago, the, the solder and, and copper pipes used to have zinc or lead in them. So, and also there's a lot of um, um, <clears throat> taps and, and such um, plumbing that have lead in them. And I think maybe some of our older meters might have lead in them as well. And so there's a lot of areas that we have to check and, and uh, I'll be quite curious to see what level of lead that we have. <clears throat> but can I ask you a question? Yes. Then? Since you're talking about the need of testing in that first uh, phase, can you give me a sense then what kind of testing you intend to do? Is it a random testing or is that everybody will be tested? Is there a chance for people to see if they have lead in their water, if you only do pocket testing? The intent is that, is that we test every house. Okay. That's the intent. But we have, to start, we have to start at a minimum level. Right now, for our population, we have to test 40 homes by the end of 2021. Okay. So 20 this year and 20 next year. And uh, we, we hope that we can find in the program, we might even be able to get volunteers that will sample their own homes and send the test or the water, in, water sample into us and we can send it in for testing. Okay. So we will put that in an information packet okay. so that if somebody wants to sample their homes themselves, they can do that. Okay, is there a cost that will be attached to it? Yeah, the cost for the test, each test is $25. Yeah. Plus shipping. Okay, We have to Thanks. ship it to the lab. Bart, is there any way that you can buy a, a lab equipment enough to test for lead ourselves? Um, we have looked into that. It's, it's quite costly to certify as a lab to be able to we're, we're certified to do certain tests that we're already doing, but for lead testing, it's, we looked into the instrument. It's quite costly. Okay. For $25 at sample, um, it's not out of the question. We're still looking into it. It's new, and there's not a lot of product out there. So secondly, that with the $25, and we've got how many house? 1,300 properties? Yeah, yeah. About 1,300. What's your time frame for finalization? Four yeah. years. Four years? And so we have a... We, we're going to do 40 by 2021? Yeah, and we've got... Have and then we have to do increase to a lot commit. more. So we're hoping to have a lot of volunteers to help do their own sampling. All right, thank you. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> in phase two, what I wrote this letter for specifically is that as a, as a council, you need to decide how we're going to um, mitigate the issue. Mit well, help with the mitigation, but also, oh, what do they call it, uh, to <coughs> incentive. Incentivizing mm -hmm. the, our u water users. Now, there's been, uh, for example, EPCOR in Edmonton, they have increased their utility rates to cover replacing lead lines. That's what they chose to do. Calgary is replacing all the lead lines that they find to property, and then encouraging the owner to replace the rest of it to the house. There's other utilities that are replacing the whole line from the water main to the house, and then given a time period for the owner to pay for that. Over four or five years, I'm not sure which, whichever may be appropriate for that. Um, 
So it, that's one decision that need, needs to be made. How do we want to fund this? Question? Yeah, Question? What, what spurred this? A Michigan. Is, initiated this problem. I mean, yeah. have we had an issue with it? In Karsten, no. As you can see in your, in your handout, the, the levels of lead coming from the water plant and in, in our distribution is very minute. It's one-tenth of what the uh, How do we micro. get an exemption then? If you can't you send some of that information off? We have to do the phase one testing. Uh -huh, the if we find that we are over the uh, maximum allowable concentration, yeah. then we have to mitigate it. But if we don't, but if we don't find lead lines, we don't find that we're over, then we're yeah. There, there's nothing. But you're going to do a random do. sampling on the 40. The sampling will be done by. We will take a percentage of older homes that are older than 1960. Those homes are specifically <laughs> um, could have lead lines going to them. I've. I've only found about three lines in the years I've worked for the town. We've replaced three lead lines, three or four. Yeah. Councilor so Bond. I don't perceive that we will find many. Should we let him finish and then ask you questions? Wanted to us? Should we let him finish and then ask yeah, questions? Go ahead. Go ahead. I just have a couple other things. Um, <clears throat> other areas to help with, if we do find lead content above the MAC, then we can help pay for the cost of the um, point of use filter. And that cost can range anywhere from $50 to $200. Most utilities are given a subsidy of up to $100 to help with that filter. And that's EPCOR, Calgary. Most <coughs> utilities I've looked into are just given that subsidy of $100. And then if we do find a significant problem with lead throughout our system, then there's a um, treatment at the water plant that we can add a, a chemical that will um, eliminate lead from leaching into the water. It just coats the, the metal pipes and protects it from corrosion, from oxidiz oxidization. That's another option if we do find that we are over that limit in a significant amount of areas. Edmonton found that their levels were fairly high in the older area, but also in the new area. And they found a, quite a few areas that were high. And so they started treatment in their plants of the orthophosphate. And that just helped eliminate that lead. Good. Um, <clears throat> There is also a rumor. <laughs> they they gave us a rumor at Edmonton when we we're up in the uh, door to Edmonton. They call it just to give us information about upcoming regulations and such. And there's a possible government grant funding that may come available in 2024 for the replacement of lead service lines. So that might be coming. We're not sure. Okay, so yeah. are you done with your presentation, yep. Bart? Okay, so Councillor Brown, Councillor Court, Councillor Drew. Okay, um, so I guess my question is, if in fact there is this orthophosphate that we can put in the lines to then um, stop us from having lead in our lines, why wouldn't we do that? Like, just... Go ahead. Is it expensive? No, it, is it? I haven't really looked into the expense of it yet. Because I, but it I, would be a pump and the chemical. That's all it would be. Because I'm just thinking, if in fact we found out that if we tested and found out that Cardston has higher, you know, in some areas or something, wouldn't it just be cheaper rather than ripping out all of the lines and all the infrastructure? Wouldn't it just be cheaper to go ahead and put that in the water? Yeah, they don't want you to say that's an alternative to taking out lead lines. I see. Lead lines need to come on. Okay, okay. And for us to do that, the cost isn't extreme. 
Uh, we can replace a lead line for approximately $5,000 per household. I mean, that's what we charge. I see. For and then part B to that question would be, so as you said, so a homeowner, if in fact I have my, I send my water in, it's high in lead, and I get the letter back saying it is, the town will replace their line to my house for the $5,000. The town will pay for that. And then it's up to me, the homeowner, to replace my lead lines that, it, that would be in my house. Is that right? Well, it's, it depends on what you want to do with, with uh, the lead lines. If we find lead line to a house from the water main to the property, are we going to charge the homeowner to pay from property to the house? are we going to do the whole thing and then or are we going to have them give them a pay period of five years to pay for it that's a decision that needs to be made okay thank you yeah. councillor colt Just go a ahead question on our ro systems does lead does that clear out this lead yes. as well it does okay good i have an ro system Councilor yeah Tool. i think Councilor my, my questions were answered so that's good yeah. Councilor Bangry. bart we've got 1300 homes at 25 dollars a test is $32,500. Yeah. Okay, that's just the testing alone. How long is it going to take per unit to go into a house with for labor rates? Uh, half test hour? Sampling would take a half an hour. So the cost is going to be quite significant just for the testing. Yes. But uh, then let me ask you this question. You were saying that you're going to send information to the homeowners somehow through the utility bill or something like mm -hmm. that, I would imagine. So is one of the options for the uh, homeowner to volunteer for a testing at their own cost? That would be a possibility, yes. Okay, so that is that something that will be uh, inside that communication piece? Well, before I put out a communication to all the residents, I need to know what the town is going to cover, yeah. how we're going to charge. If, if we find a lead line, how we're going to charge for replacing that lead okay. line. So you almost want the part two to be answered before we can even go to the part one. Yeah. Is that yeah. what I'm hearing? Yes. Okay, I need to give that information to out know. to the residents so they know what to expect if they right. find lead in their lines. Yeah, I, I wanted to know which way you wanted us yeah. to kind of approach that. Okay, so that's clear in my mind. Councillor Bengry. Bart, is there, is there a year... Of, of the testing of the home, like any home built after 1985 or something like that, uses plastic, you know, uh, lines. Yeah, if, sure. if the owner walks in there and says, hey, I've got all plastic in my line, in my house, but I don't know what my service is from the, from the uh, shutoff to my property line, are they void of that test for the house? I wouldn't say they're void, but I wouldn't be as worried about theirs. There are See, my plastic, home is all copper. Yeah, some plastic lines still have the copper um, joints or, or the couplers. Yeah. And so they could have had lead in them. Some of them had lead in them. Yeah, and it's, it's a joint. Yeah. So but if you have a the system, you, would you still test that house? No, we won't test the. We won't test if the RO system is where the water comes into the house and it goes through an RO system. We won't test it because the RO system will take out lead. All right. So, any more questions? All right. So, Bob, thank you so much for that information piece. Maybe one more question Sorry. from Councillor no, Brown. Sorry. Um, what would be your personal? You've got lots of, you've got way more experience in this than most of the people sitting at this table, especially me. Mm -hmm. What would, what do you think is fair? What, after going to these meetings and talking to the communities and talking to the other people that are having to do the same thing, what do you think is reasonable? What I would, <clears throat> what I would suggest myself is, I think, uh, 
a point of use filter for an interim time until the lead can be mitigated. I think a, a $100 rebate would be um, reasonable. I and also I feel that we, we've already been replacing lead lines from the main to the property on town cost. That's our, our line. But if you give a, a homeowner a time period to pay for the other would be um, generous. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Bonds. Okay, so this is in the back of my mind. If if you do this random testing and find out that we don't have an issue, like in your report, so far we don't have an issue, where our levels are below what the half is come to. Yeah. We're below that five. Ten times so below. So if we're there, why do we have to do anything? Mandated by regulations. It's Regardless if we're under the thing? We have to do initial testing. Well, no, I'm not worried about the testing. But why would we need to go and, and change everybody's lines if, if we don't have a problem? Well, if we find a lead line, that's mandated that we have to change I it. understand that, but those who don't have lead lines, no, you're not expecting them no. to go and spend no. a bunch of money. No. So no. we're really no. not looking at 1,300 homes. We're looking at those who have the problem. Period. Yeah, if we, well, if we, lines that the testing will continue. There's going to be a continuous testing even after 2024. Yeah. yeah. They want a lead testing program. Yeah. If we find that we're, our levels are low enough, then that testing will go back to a minimum. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. They, they really don't know yet until they see how the conditions are throughout, throughout Alberta. Comes back to my initial question. Has there been a big issue? Has there been people that have been getting sick from lead poisoning? Or is this an overreaction by somebody that's looking for a job to do something yeah. with their job? They have found that the ones who are susceptible sorry, to lead a violent question. are, are um, women who are pregnant yeah. or who are breastfeeding or young children because they absorb the lead no. And it causes psychological problems and, and brain development problems. Mm -hmm. That's what they found with lead. Okay, okay. so that's where the issue is. Yeah. So if, okay. if we're looking at testing a home, if, a, if there's a home with young children, yeah. we'll go there first. Yeah. But okay. I have one question, yeah, and just curiosity, answer. because I have not lived in this community long enough to know. For the older homes, where... Where was the community, was the town involved in putting the pipes right from the main, yes. right up to the house? Yep. Then doesn't it behoove the town to look after the cost of that? That puts it in line, at the first place. The town would have put it in. Right. So that is a question I had in my mind. Hmm. Who put those lines in? Yeah. Yeah, even I built my home in 89. And the town put the water line right to my house. Right. So in that case, there so is another philosophical question. Whose uh, responsibility. responsibility is it? Yeah. And, that's, and that's a decision we make. If we feel that we're going to replace the line right to the house, Excellent. Yeah. then that's what we do. I mean, we, we're always looking for saving, but sometimes it's yeah. not the right place. Yeah. yeah. One more question, Bart. Right? I've got a home that's 100 and some years old. My water line, my driveway is right over top of it. it comes up the, up through the driveway up to the side of my house. Mm -hmm. How are you going to replace that line? You gonna, well, you there's uh, some tricks to that. Are you going to Are you going to shoot it through? We would. Yeah, you, you we would try the option of pulling a new line in. So you dig a hole at the house and dig one in the street, <laughs> and then fish a fish tape through it and pull a cable through and pull the new line in. All right. I've well, I think you gave us quite a bit of uh, information. Now we need to digest that and try to make some decisions. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks, Bart. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thanks, All Bart. right. Thanks, Bart. Okay, so let's move on.
We have the minutes of the February 11th. Okay. So the regular well, meeting. So we have minutes of February 11. There were a couple typos that got fixed. Any questions regarding those minutes? I read them. I find them reflective of what we discussed. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes of the council meeting of February 11th, 2020. All right. Questions? All in favor? Thank you very much. So the next one is the bylaw 1673A under bylaw and policy and is a cannabis control bylaw amendment. We did first reading and really, as you could see, the only changes that was done to that policy was to put a definition of what consumption meant and is more encompassing. So we now need to have a second and third reading if you were ready to do so. so. I'll move that we have second reading on bylaw 1673A. All right. It's controlled bylaw. Thank you. Do you have <clears throat> any questions? It's a small one. Go ahead, <clears throat> Councillor. A number of companies now are, are pushing, I guess it's cannabis without the THC. We're not concerned about that. Well, that's some of it would be yeah, medical well. marijuana. Some of it would just be companies that it's legal. They can. It's not. There's no THC in it. So. Okay, that's one for Jeff. Uh, I don't know if I know the exact answer to that, but I think the intent of this is the public consumption of mm -hmm. it, yeah. right? Okay. Because Alberta Health's concern was the normalizing of consumption. Um, so it's again not prohibiting any use. Even well, there's very few illicit uses anymore, frankly. But it's. It's not prohibiting the use, it's the public consumption of such. So most likely people that are taking it for medicinal purposes won't be taking it on Main Street. Right, right. Yeah. They can, in their properties and homes, no problem. Okay, good enough? Yeah. All right, so all in favor? Thank you. So that's second reading. We need to do third. Uh, Councillor Bangor, Councillor Brown. Go ahead, Councillor I'm not so sure who was the first one there. Go ahead, Councillor Brown. Perfect, move? it's me. So I make a motion to for third reading of bylaw 1673A, Cannabis Control no, Bylaw no, Amendment. No, no. No. Yeah. No, Good. All this stuff. We, we don't need to no, allow no, because it. we're doing second and right. third. Okay. All in favor? Thank you very much. This bylaw is now passed. Is it's amendment. <laughs> All right, so we're going to uh, put Councillor Selk on the speaker form. And we're going to carry on with uh, item seven on your agenda, which has to do with other business. One of the main thing being the proposed uh, recreation facility. It's a presentation by the Rec Recreation Committee. Hello. Hey, you're live. And thank okay. you, thank you, Randy, for being there. Thank you, Councillor Selk, and. Uh, Black Hope technology. you're enjoying uh, warmy weather. Wipe the sun and uh, Councillor <laughs> and Councillor Brown, uh, the three of you will be part of that presentation. Uh, Councillor Brown, when you need to stand up, please do so whenever it feels more comfortable. Okay. Go, Go ahead. ahead. You ready, Councillor Salk? Go ahead. All right. Okay, so um, council asked uh, Councillor Salk and myself uh, to um, come up with open house and come up with ideas for our open house. And they also wanted to know our information that with the town's help, uh, Randy Russell and his people have piled together a whole bunch of information for us. And so you all wanted us to present that to you. So that's essentially what we're going to do now. Um, so to start out with, as you all remember, you approved the money that was spent to hire Factor 5. Factor 5 came in and they did this uh, strategic action plan that you've all been given. It is the Let's Grow Cardston action plan. I hope you all have read it. There is a, quite a few. Anywho, <laughs> so 
seems how you've read it, perfect. We're just gonna jump right in and start talking about some of the things. First of all, we wanted to throw the dates out for our open house that have already been booked. Um, I called the seniors because we really felt like having an open house in this community, we needed to make sure to try and hit everybody, as many people as possible in the fairest way possible. And so in doing that, we decided to meet with the seniors during the day so that the seniors don't have to come out during the night and slipping and falling and seniors like things better in the afternoon. <laughs> so Councillor Selk and myself and uh, Randy Russell will be going on March the 16th to a seniors luncheon and we will be presenting, they've graciously, um, where their entertainment, so to speak. So I'm sure Councillor Selk will bring his A game. So we will, on that day, we're going to go ahead and present all the information that you're getting today, and we'll have a Q&A because it's really important to hear seniors' opinions on this because they pay taxes in this town, and we want to make sure that we're hearing everybody's side of things. And when we talked to the president, Butch Beamer, of the seniors, he was thrilled that we were willing to do that. So then the next open house, which will be open for the public, will be on March 25th at 7 o'clock at the Civic Center here. And at that time, uh, Councillor Selk, myself, and Randy Russell will be here and we will be um, giving our pitch. But more importantly, we want to hear from the public. We're going to show them um, the homework that we've done and maybe we'll just dive in straight to the homework. So Councillor Selk, myself, and a few people from the um, Parks and Rec Ad Hoc Committee, we drove, to, we drove out to Brooks to visit their rec center because we heard it was fantastic and we wanted to get ideas and we were all excited. So we drove out to Brooks only to have our hopes crushed crushed harshly because it was a fabulous facility but not what we were thinking. But while we were there, um, the manager I believe we were talking to, she suggested that more so what we were looking at was more in Duchess. And so that Duchess was like five, ten minutes away. And so we agreed, we were already out there, let's drive five, 10 minutes and go to Duchess. So we called them and they graciously said, come on down. We went there, we um, did a walkthrough of their facility and they were awesome and let us ask, ask questions. And they've also given us their blueprints, which y'all have. Um, those are the blueprints that are in front of you. So you've got the design of the building. Now this building that they designed, um, was $4.5 million and they were able to fund it. Now y'all have to realize that Duchess is not a huge community. It's a, it's a kissing sister, I would say, to Brooks. It's very close, but it is tiny, like village size. But they, they were lucky enough to have their curling rink burned down. <laughs> And so they had some insurance money and were able to use that money along with some other money that they were given in grants and money from county. And, or actually they weren't given money from the county, they were given the land. And so in all of those things, they were able to build this beautiful building. And so the building that y'all have in front of you is the building um, it, that is in Duchess. In this building, when we walked in, we realized that it was pretty dang close to what we're thinking we would like to have in Cardston. It has, the only thing it is missing is it does have an indoor track, but the indoor track is around the gymnasium. And so we just didn't feel like there was enough room. We felt that we would like to suspend ours so that we would have a walking track up top so that you could look down and see what was going on and it didn't take up floor space because there's so much attic space because it's so large. Now this building, we also visited the one in Standoff which is a sprung structure which we love and we're uh, so gracious um, that the Blood Tribe allowed us to come out there and visit that building. That building, of course, we would love to bring to Cardston. We're all over that, but um, there were concerns in regards to um, 
it looking not quite like we'd want it in Cardston. And it also had, um, with wind and the few things we were concerned with. So we were trying to, the rec board had kind of steered us towards less using the sprung structure and more uh, wood build. And so um, the one in Duchess is a wood build. And so the one in Duchess has has um, a gym, has a, um, has the track, has classrooms that can be used, has yoga yoga studios, has um, has weight room. weight room, has rappelling, has all sorts of things that they have designed for their community, and they have a phenomenal uh, manager that manages it, and she. She takes care of it and she runs programs all summer long through the winter. That building is hugely in use. And she, she I mean, she is amazing, I must say. We were quite impressed with her. Randy, did you have anything to add to that when we looked at that building? No? Okay, jump in at any time. Okay. Um, so in this building, so when we met with Factor Five, um, when they were coming up with our strategic plan, they had the board members of the Parks and Rec uh, ad hoc committee, they had us come up with um, questions that should be sent out to the community. And so questions were sent out to the community, and you have, you have some of those questions in front of you, um, and they answered them. And then Factor 5 compiled all of that information, and they went ahead and came up with a game plan that they felt would fit our community. I'm going to be honest, I didn't love it, but their version was their version. And we felt like, and we were told, that in order to go ahead with the next step, we would need a strategic plan, which we have. We bought, paid for it. It does have some great ideas in which we can use, but... There were areas of it that I, I wasn't um, in love with. Councillor Suck, did you want to add anything? And the only thing I wanted to add with the Duchess facility is a lot of the cost of that, or probably a quarter of it, was paving all the way around the complex. So the actual structure was not quite as expensive as you know what was indicated. It was $1.5 million, but there was about a million of that that was for paving and all the landscaping that took place outside. Do you know how old that structure, that uh, facility is? The one in Duchess? In Duchess. Councillors, wasn't it within five years? It wasn't very yeah, old. The one in Duchess. How it's, old? It's, it's how old? within four or five years old. So yeah. the costs are still relevant. Yes, that's what they figured. Yeah, that's what they figured. Anything else, Councillor Salk? Mm, no, not yet. Okay. So, um, let's see. So, Factor 5 went ahead. They came up with a game plan for us. They um, sent, the, sent the questions out to the public. The public, all 10 of them, answered back and came up with, came up with um, a plan. And the plan was, therefore, presented, like I said. And so... Um, I sit on the Parks and Rec ad hoc, and I also sit on the Parks and Rec um, boards, and all of them said the next step, let's go ahead and do an open house. Let's, let's find out if this community really is behind this. Because if they aren't behind us, we're done talking about it. Yeah. We need to know. Yeah. If, if, this is, if this is the direction that the taxpayers of Cardston want us to go, then we seriously need to look at this. But if they're not willing to come to a meeting and ask questions and do their homework, then this isn't going to work because this is kind of a large project and we definitely need all hands on deck for this. So if I can just, if you'll just go to the question page. So it says, I don't know how much time I have, Mayor. Councillor, as long as you want. Okay, so we're done. No. Um, so if you could just go to your open house uh, question page. These are um, questions that Randy compiled of all of the questions that the board had and we all came up with, and we tried to come up with answers of them. So if, 
So like the first question is, what would, what would be the cost for our facility? We're roughly looking at about $5 million and we feel like that is reasonable cost. Like the mayor, like you said, it's been within five years, so we kind of felt like if we went a little bit higher, like Councillor Selk said, they had paving, but you never know what can come up. So then the next question was, um, how do we fund that project? Well, that's a great idea. Councillor Selk has suggested um, buying lottery tickets, and we support <laughs> him on that. But until that actually comes to pass, um, that is a huge ask. We, we know right now that the government is saying heck no to pretty much everything. So we are looking, we are looking at people that are willing to donate. We are looking at any possible grants that are in there as far as community grants, First Nations, if we can have help with that, Handicap Association, whatever. We made a huge list of all of the areas that could be hit in this community and that that's what we're thinking and that's why I say we need everyone on board for this. So the next question is how will this facility affect the citizens taxes? Well that's a great great question. So if you go to if you go to um, the next page uh, Jeff put together um, Jeff put together uh, I believe it was Jeff or Hawken his people anyway they put together um, what would happen to our taxes if we debentured X amount of dollars? How much would our taxes go up? 20%, 15%? It's all about how much money we have in the bank, how much money gets given to us as to how much the taxes will go up. And then it's the running of this facility. Um, the next question was, what will a pass for this facility cost? And again, you can go to the Duchess community. Um, that's the one we were looking at, and that one was very, very reasonable. They made it very reasonable, like, I think it was like three or four bucks a day for, or three dollars a day for the walking track, and a hundred dollars, yeah, it's, it's in, it's part in your, it's part of, yeah. Anyway, very reasonable, and they were super, super busy with theirs, and so we felt like, one might ask, well, in Cardston, we have a lot. We have got two weight gyms that are going on right now. But the problem with them is neither one of them are wheelchair success accessible. And after being in crutches for the last two weeks, it really bites not having that anywhere. There are stairs everywhere in this town, and it's annoying. So that's something to think about. Um, we went ahead when we were doing our research, and we met with gymnastics. We met with the uh, Windy City Gym. We've met with many of the um, uh, rec uh, boards in Cardston and coming up with ideas. Could you use this building? If we had this building, could you do indoor soccer during the winter? What kind of money could get going through here? These are all questions that we've asked. Um, the next question is the best one, Councillor Selk. Maybe you can answer this one, Councillor Selk, and it is, where will this facility be located? And I think that's one of the main reasons we want to have this open house. Well, not the main reason, but one of the reasons is, you know, there's obviously locations that the tent has available to us because we own the land. So it could be down by... A, Alliance Park. It could be on the west end of town on land that the town currently owns. It could be on the east end of town or some other location. But um, I think it's best if we proceed with the knowledge that the public has had some input into where this should go. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, and to stop the chit-chatting of the other places it could go. Um, number six, it's what is the time frame to start construction? Well, I mean, if it was up to Councillor Salk or myself, it would be next month. But until that jackpot comes in, it's all about the money. We can't do anything without money. So, I mean, that's, that's quite honestly the answer. Um, what will be in the facility? Well, as you can see, pickleball, volleyball, basketball, walking track, dance studios, weight room, soccer, badminton, um, what about wrestling? Wrestling, of course. Anything you can imagine, 
Our goal is to fill it because we want it to be busy. It's all about it being busy. If, especially in the winter here in Cardston, we need a place in the winter to go for a walk so we're not slipping and falling. So we can be busy and active all year round. One of my favorite quotes is this. Um, it is from the, um, it is from the Strategic Plan. It says, a thriving, healthy community with recreation facilities that help retain youth and seniors and attracts visitors and new residents. We need to develop an exciting new recreation facility that spurs on economic activity, tourism, and a higher quality of health and life for our residents. Um, okay. Next question, um, will a facility like this attract people to our community? Councillor Selk, I'll turn this one to you. I don't know that we can measure how much it means to the economic development of a town to have a facility like this. I think we recognize that a lot of residents both old and young, when they want to do something like this, they head off to Lethbridge. And I think if we have basically one more feather in our cap as, as a community, it helps to draw young family here. I think one of the things that we we saw and what we thought about when we saw the Duchess facility is if young moms, for example, could go and have a play place for their kids to basically to have a good time for an hour or two while the moms work out or do whatever they want to do, walk. And um, those sorts of things are an attraction to our town and make it something that's um, a place where both old and young will want to move and stay. So I think that's just one of the things that we have to consider is the economic development benefits of a facility like this. Thank you, Councillor. I would add to that, um, this fall I had the privilege of going to a Parks and Rec conference and they had a speaker. She was a researcher, a medical doctor at the U of C, and she talked about how Parks and Rec in towns and communities and villages can help with depression and the difference exercise can make. And I feel like in every community, I can only speak of Cardston, but I know that is huge here. And a lot of people struggle with this and by having healthy living and by giving people the opportunity all year round to get out. And like Councillor Selk said, mom's coming out. They do it in the summertime. They go for walks with their babies. But in the wintertime, it gets really hard because they're, they're housebound. And being housebound is pretty rough. And we've got seniors that are housebound, we've got young moms, we've got people with disabilities. They need to get out and be active. And by having a rec facility, and she spoke to this, it drops all sorts of things. Diabetes is better, your mental health is better, cancer patients, she talked about that. They did this huge, they did this huge project where patients that had been working out and then diagnosed with cancer, the ones that continued to work out, the higher survival rate was amazing. And so these are all, these are all things we need to look at for our community because we want communities that are happy and healthy. Um, the last question is, what do we need to do to accommodate the seniors? Uh, I think that's a huge one. I think uh, Councillor Suck and I have already talked about them. It's essentially, and we will get more information when we meet with them on the 16th, but it's my understanding that the seniors are really wanting, the ones that we've talked to are wanting a facility that they can go to and walk and that they can exercise and it's flat floors and it's not uphill and downhill and people would say, well, we have the Remington Center, but it's not level and some of them really struggle with that. And, and it's concrete, so it is really hard on their shins and their legs and their joints because apparently cartilage is a thing that happens the older we get. So, I've heard. So, anyway, these are all, these are all things, don't look at me, these are all things that um, we're trying to answer in this open house. Um, I guess, I, Councillor Salk, is there anything you wanted to add? 
Yeah. Uh, just, uh, I guess, a couple of things. Uh, my lottery ticket plan, <laughs> I want that to be understood that I'm buying tickets because if we win it big, then right. we'll just donate the cash. Perfect. Uh, <laughs> that's not a... It's not a good strategic plan, so I don't have much hope in that. And I think the other thing that um, I I think Councillor Brown touched on it briefly, but I do believe that there is grant funding available, not through the province, but through the federal government. And I think that's where we're going to have to look to try and um, focus our attention on getting grant funds and... uh, I think what we're hoping is that we can raise, whether it's fundraise or grants or whatever the case may be, a significant portion of the cost of this. So that's, um, I think that's it for now. I think I think I speak on all of us when I say it is not our intention for this to be a huge financial burden. That's not why we want to do this, and we wanted we want to be smart in doing this. That is our goal. So in all the research, in everything we've done, we've tried to keep an open mind and see what is best for Cardston. But I guess I will just close with, I think that the vision for Cardston is to be healthy, to have economic growth, to keep the people we have here and, and have Cardston a place that can be all year round. Um, I guess I will throw this back if there's any questions for for all of us. Thank you, Councillor, for that thorough presentation. There are some points, obviously, that are uh, yet to be looked at. And thank you, Councillor Self, for your input. I sense your passion. I sense your desire for something that will keep community healthy. There's nothing wrong with the concept. Mm-hmm. Where uh, the reality hits is a dollar impact, and as you mentioned, uh, we we need to open it to all for questions, and I'm just there to guide the discussion today, and uh, I really, I'm sure that there are concerns uh, regarding the financial, which is always what the large project will. Uh, bring to the surface Mm -hmm. is how do we in a true economic reality that is a provincial reality and a municipal reality also down the line, how do we reconcile large project capital capital investment with uh, dwindling funding Mm -hmm. and with uh, the need to tax. So those are questions <coughs> that are real questions and we can't avoid them no matter how much we may like a project or not. And as you say, the appetite is with the taxpayer and that you will not know until you ask them. Mm-hmm. And so I appreciate all your work you've done. You've done a lot of work with your, your committee. You brought to the table much information. Uh, there are some questions, I'm sure, that we need to kind of bring to the surface. Councillor Drew. I just want to make a comment. I've talked to several, when I say several people, one or two, <laughs> um, that have expressed some concern about the actual cost and how that's going to affect their tax dollar, that kind of stuff. And I think it's important for us to have those people at our meeting, but also the yeah. people that are in favor, right? So Absolutely. that we have kind of a balance and can see, okay, this group says, no, we don't, you know, I don't have any kids. I don't, I don't want to have to worry. I don't want my taxes to go up, that kind of thing. And then on the other hand, we have people who are saying, yeah. So. Jeff, do you have a comment? I just want to make a couple quick comments on the financial. So one thing to keep in mind, and Councillor Selk alluded to offsetting the capital, for about every million dollars that could be found in capital, it reduces the operating cost about 65000 a year. So just, just kind of a number to keep, okay, if we could raise $2 million, well, then it's not six ten anymore. It's about 130000 less than that. So just just as, as we're thinking, because we, we did this analysis based on full financing, 
with an aggressive operational budget. So to, to be fair to the process, it is, you know, three full-time staff and, you know, uh, you, we try to consider everything, not to exaggerate the number, but to be, not to be surprised after if we were really, really low. So just keep in mind that if there is some funding that can come on the capital side, that reduces that annual, that annual amount by 65,000 a year, roughly. It's not a perfect number, but, but roughly. And then the other thing in conversations with the public, and, and I put it on my spreadsheet at the beginning, is yes, extra costs have to be funded with extra money, but there's also another side to that, that you can reduce other things if that's the priority of the community, and that's still to be determined, yep. right? So the one thing that mitigates the concern about the tax increase is the appetite for the facility. And then if it is high, a higher priority than other things, which we can examine in great detail as the process proceeds. So I just wanted to give a little bit of context to the numbers behind it that we, we put together. Thank you. Okay, so the number you put together at this point, the high point was about between capital and maintenance was about $600,000 a year. Correct. Around so, that figure. That's with a fully financed $5 million, correct. Right, so and about that's over 20 000. years. Correct. So that means that the capital, $5 million, would be amortized over 20 years correct. at about... Two and a half, two point four percent, something like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The rest is maintenance that you see as being... The cost of running the facility 24-7 or whatever, that is all year long. And, and there's an important couple of pieces that are appropriate for some debate, frankly, when we, when we entertain these types of facilities. So when we looked at the cost, it was just under 300000 um, 50 of that is replacement reserves. So that's included. We didn't, we didn't put the full depreciation of the building in there because that really, as we've talked many times before, to try and tax or recover full depreciation is incredibly onerous on, right. on anybody for anything. So it has a portion of that because we felt it was important to keep it in because it was consistent with council's planning processes in the rec master plan. So we're currently reserving 225000 a year, 255 or 225, 255 we'd be proposing that that would go to 305 with a facility like this, right? Recognizing that that will not recoup the cost at the end of life. It's only 50,000 a year on 5 million. It's not gonna last 100 years. Yeah. You know, it just won't, but it's something. It's something that's going back towards it. So we tried to be careful there. Um, and we don't have a firm grasp on the programming to say this is exactly what staffing and all that needs to look like. We know conceptually, so we tried to be um, a little bit liberal there, but careful mm -hmm. not to blow the thing out of the water. So there's there's still a lot to work through here, but it's some guiding numbers at this point. Okay, so oh, Councillor Drew, Councillor Bangry, Councillor Barnes. So I guess I, I, I'm really glad that we're having a public meeting. Are we going to do any type of survey, fan out to the community? To every member. Yeah, like are we going to do that, or are we just having this public meeting? I guess that's my question. Yeah. Please, Councillor. That's a great idea. So Factor 5 apparently sent it out to everybody in the community uh, and, and they already answered us back, those 10 people. So uh, maybe we'll get... 365. Yeah, they sent them out twice. Yeah, but... Did they send it to everybody? Because I didn't get it. on the amount of people we have in Cardston. But, but the they... people that are coming... Yes, yes. But, but once people, once the rumor mill starts and right. they find out that my taxes may go up 20%, right. I'm thinking that's an opportunity for us to fan out a survey so that those people who are concerned about that can actually have a voice. I don't know. That's just so the answer is, can we? Yes. Yeah. Yes. The is answer worth, is yes, we yeah. can. Is it worthwhile? Though? Yeah. That okay. is a question. All right. Uh, thank you. I have something uh, regarding that also. Councillor Bangri and Councillor Barnes, and then I will uh, ask my question. Go ahead, Mr. Councillor Barnes. Councillor well, Barnes. Um, <clears throat> kudos to you guys. I think this is a great, um, uh, you've done a lot of great research, I, I, and I like what you've done. I'm like everybody else. The tax component is, is, is worrisome to me. But the fundraising, if we get out there and get, you know, telling people all about this, get them excited about it. I think the funding will come. I mean, personally, I'm prepared to do some, make a donation. 
because um, I like the project. I just don't like 20% taxes. I'm not prepared for that at all. Mm -hmm. But I like the project. I think it's a great thing. Whether I have, it, whether I even use it or not, that's the thing. I, I'm looking at everybody else that and could use it, you know, grandkids that will use it. I, I, I really like the thing. I like the questions. Uh, the qu questions are very appropriate. And, and um, yeah, uh, thanks for all the research. It, it helps me to understand it a lot more. But that's my biggest concern is the tax part. Okay. Councillor Bangree? Uh, I appreciate the, the, uh, the presentation. Uh, hundred percent and I support a recreation facility however <laughs> there's all these questions of finances and money mm. uh, I haven't found a money tree in Carson yet we have already in place recreation facilities mm -hmm. that require yearly maintenance and one one individual rec facility is our our skating rink, our ice center. What is that going to cost us in the next five to ten years <coughs> for operational? We've got, uh, we're re relocating, we've got uh, in the master plan, we've got relocation of the uh, tennis courts. We've got uh, a spray park involved. <coughs> and we've got a swimming pool now with water slides. We've got a playground. Uh, it, it all takes maintenance. Mm -hmm. And the operation uh, charges of that maintenance will just overwhelm us eventually. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I don't know. I, I like the concept. I, I love the concept of a recreation center. But we're talking about uh, involving tourist information center, which we already have. We're talking about... Uh, uh, different courts, which we already have. We, you know, uh, I don't know, dance studio and so forth like that. There's, these things are all in place. Are we going to be able to entice them to move into this rec center at a cost? Councillor Brown, go ahead. Did you have anything else? No. Can I answer? Um, Councillor Selk, don't be afraid to jump in on this, but I, to answer part of that, I would say <clears throat> the vision that we've talked about is it is our goal to have rentals in there, to have businesses in there so that they're paying rent, so that we're taking that rent and we're paying down our debt with that rent. Now, is it going to be high enough? Well, we'll see. That's why. Now, are we moving tennis courts? Well, no, not necessarily. Is it in the rec plan? Yeah, he put it in there, but he also put in doing seniors housing at the golf course, and we're not necessarily doing that. So there are things in the rec plan that he had a broad idea of that aren't necessarily a way we want to go, but we appreciated his intake on that. Councillor Slough, did you want to add? Well, the thought that comes to mind, too, is at some future time there may be a reality that hits the town of Cardston and that's that there are a number of facilities, namely churches, that may be off limits in the future for using them as a Pickle. as a pickleball center or whatever the case may be. There may be a day coming when uh, all those activities will be asked to move and the question is where do they move to? Mm -hmm. If there's no facility to accommodate them then I guess they dry up and go away. Right. And are we prepared to do what we can to try and make a facility viable, or do we just let these programs that seem to have a lot of seniors' content to them go away? That's a question I don't know. Thank you. Okay, so I have a few questions. And, and just comments and questions. The question to go along with uh, Councillor Drew has to do with the um, survey that needs to be done, in my opinion, to, for the uh, businesses of this town. Mm -hmm. A lot of the business owners are from the county. Therefore, if, even if you were to do a plebiscite question on funding, they would not even access that facility, that plebiscite. So I really honestly feel that 
there has to be some kind of mechanism to uh, involve the businesses of the town regarding that facility because in town there will be the hardest hit tax wise and in speaking to a few of them they really are concerned about the impact on their taxes so therefore i really think all the chamber of commerce need to be at the table need to be invited formally so that you can disseminate the information but they're going to want to know the impact on their businesses. So that's one. Uh, the other question I have is maybe regarding one of the ideas that is in a Factor 5 uh, document, which was to look at a clubhouse acting as a community uh, rec center, kind of. So I don't really know where that idea has gone because you presenting something uh, totally different. So I don't really know. I'll answer that. Please go ahead. Um, so, so like I said, when Factor 5 came up with their game plan, their strategic plan, they came up with a bunch of ideas. And then as the ad hoc committee and the rec board, we took those ideas and created what we felt was best for our community. Factor 5 really wanted us because they were trying to kill two birds with one stone. They were trying to give us a golf course <coughs> house, like a building for us, and a clubhouse, thank you, and and a rec center all in one. And so he he went out there and he thought it would be great for us to go ahead and build the rec center out there but then we realized we don't have, there's not enough land out there to build it. Factor 5 also wanted us to put seniors housing in part of this rec center and underground parking and, 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 and. And the ball was looking pretty fantastic, but it was scaring the tar out of some of us. Randy's, I'm sure, is shaking his head, as I'm sure <laughs> Councillor Salk is. These, these are all great, but... Again, we weren't thinking $100 million. We were thinking just a little less. And so we were trying to come up with, again, something. We took their information, and then we tried to tone it for Cardston because we didn't feel like $100 million was reasonable. All right, so you answer that question. Thank Councilor you. Salk, did you have anything? Or Randy, anything? In other words, you paid a, a good money for something that was not very useful. I, I wouldn't say that because, as Jeff told us in the beginning, this is something that needs to be done. Yeah. When we're applying for grants, when we're applying for all of this, you have to do a study. You have to do it. Yeah. So now we've bought and paid for it. We have it. So now that's one step that's already been done. All right. Scale it down to where so, it needs. Yeah. Councillor Suck, did you have anything? No. Okay, there, there is another question I may have uh, regarding the fund, funding. It appears that the way it's presented, the town is going solo, meaning that there is no conversation with the county as per the ICF uh, to kind of bring them there in the past without uh, consulting them that never have wanted to give us a cent. And it has been uh, my understanding from here on that if we have any kind of project like that where we would like their input, that they want to be consulted and advised of the project. So where is that consultation with the county? So as part of our advertising, the county, the blood tribe, the reserve, they're all being invited to this open house to come and see what we're thinking about. It's like in the last meeting, the Rotarians were upset that they weren't consulted about the moving of the camp kitchen down Lions at Lions Club. Park. Sorry, the Lions Club. Well, we're just in the baby stages as they were there. That's why we haven't called them to the table. Have we talked to members of council from the county? Of course we have. Yes, go ahead, Brandy. Chairman sits on our ad hoc, ad hoc committee. Yeah, he does. He's aware of what is going on. Is he reporting to his yes, council? Yes, he is. Carrie? They, they actually 
gave us a little bit of money for this strategic planning. They gave us okay. We haven't, we haven't also gone to them and proposed anything. Because exactly. It's so early. Exactly. Okay. You guys are in the middle of mitigation with them. Anyway. Well, but we do have which them is sitting at our table. Okay. All right. So Quinton that's good. Sits at the table. So whether he's reporting, I would think he okay. gets the minutes, just like the rest of us, to okay. submit them. And with the factor five, I believe they gave five thousand dollars or ish to go towards it. Was my understanding? Okay. So good. they too felt the need for this community because they too were hearing from people. So good. And so my, my last comment will be uh, to Councillor Bound. Councillor Bound, mm -hmm. you were talking about 20% on your tax. You really are concerned with that. Uh, you were saying if you were able to raise the money for the capital, you would help with that and support that cause. Mm -hmm. The problem is a little bit deeper than that. And I think the taxpayer needs to understand that. Because there is one cost that you cannot take away, it's a maintenance cost. And the maintenance cost represents about 10% of that 20%. And so I really hope that the taxpayer understands that, that no matter what, that's a 10% increase in taxes, no matter what. So that's a comment. So... Any more question, comment, councillor? Uh, counsel I haven't said much, but uh, councillor Court, I'm maybe happy. Maybe you. It's a whole uh, attitude we need to address. We're so used to getting things for free, like our stake centers and everything else. Um, not that I want to be compared to our neighbors to the east, but they've got <coughs> they got facilities now that are legacy facilities. They're there for the next 40 years, Indeed. 50 years. Uh, we can sit back and Talk I won't see any pitch because we're not but we do have to be careful with our funds but if we, if we just sit back and take care of roads and sewers and that's all we ever worry about where are we where are we going down the road i've got two kids i didn't think would ever move back to cars so now we've got seven grandkids here what's going to be down the road for them to do here 20 years down the road and 30 years down the road i know where i'll be 30 years down the road i'll be six <laughs> feet under but uh, but that that's my bit of my concern is yes we have to worry about the dollars we also, you have have to to. Look, we also have to look at the future. So. And there is wisdom in what you're saying, but you have to do what the taxpayer is yeah, capable right. of uh, um, giving and then a point where they cannot give. So that's where we have to figure out where is that point. In, Go ahead. In closing, <laughs> I believe that... It is our goal for the residents of Cardston to step up and tell us the direction they want this to go. Totally if they right. do not show up and they do not speak and tell us what they want, we cannot give it to them. So I guess my plea to anybody watching this would be, where are you on March 25th? We need you here. 26th. 25th. We need you here because we need you listening and talking to us. 25th or 26th? Also known as the 26th. We need you here. We need you here on the 26th. No, I have it as the 25th. Because we need you to, to let us know the direction. Because it is pointless for us to do all this work if we do not have the support of this community. Councillor Salk, in closing, did you want to add anything? I guess if we continue to do what we've always done, then we'll always get what we've always got. <laughs> so That's I'm trying to say that we're trying to do something a little bit different. And if we don't, if the citizens of the town of Cardston, if that's the decision they want to make is that they, they want to stay, remain status quo, then that's what we'll do. We'll honor their wishes. Thank you. The taxpayer is always a king of the matter, isn't it? Jeff, have we ever done a, uh, a survey of population age, like yes. the, the categories of age? Yes. If you look at the... Uh, it's in our there is, statistics. If yeah. you look at the statistics, it's on the, last page. The, the only thing that is not, is not quite complete, you can go online and get it. Yeah, so this would have probably come from the StatsCan profile. That was just um, done. So we didn't do age demographics in our municipal census. Right. 
Oh, we did do yeah. age demographics. I'm going to take all that back. We were, had so much foresight, we did uh, age demographics. But StatsCan does them whenever they do theirs as well. So okay. What you will get on Stats Canada that is not shown there is by slices of ages, the uh, dollar amount of income that I have. Right, income. And that will allow you to see the per percentage of people that are on fixed income. And that actually is an op opener in our town. Yes. And when you start to look at the average income in our town, you will see that it is, in comparison with the province, we lower than the province, which those stats are interesting because people never want to admit they're not making as much money as... Yeah. So, Councillor so, Selk, I think you about. have a grandfather <laughs> uh, duty. And so uh, we, we are so troubled that that brings you to tears. <laughs> Take care. Okay. Thank you. We'll call you back later. I Thank think you. it's important to Still also... There, Councillor Selk? No, I think he left. I think it's also yes. important to say that the people that we have sitting on the ad hoc committee, we have town residents, we have county residents, we have, um, we have, who? Business. Oh yeah, business owners from the town of Cardston. We have counselors from the county, counselors from the town. We have a diverse, oh, we have Westwind School Division. So when, when these people show up, it's a full house and we have many different opinions, definitely, but they all brought us to this stage. I guess I just wanted to say a special thank you to uh, Randy and Jeff and their staff for helping us compile all of this because we couldn't have done it without them, so thank you. And Councillor, thank you for the many, many hours of hard work you put together for that presentation. Much appreciated. I honestly give you my compliments. Thank you. All right, so on another topic, let's go to 7B, donation request. That is the Alzheimer's Society. Jeff, you may want to express okay. the uh, reason why this. Thank you, Randy. Thank Randy. you for this. Uh, normally, you have discretion up to $200. Kiel, right. they're requesting $300. Maybe you want to explain a little bit uh, what causes sure. the increase in that donation. Yeah, so I'll give the moral. I support uh, um, the support of this donation request because we've sort of caused the additional money. So this group normally uses our camp kitchen in the area down at Lions Park. And because of the potential of construction down there, they're going to host it and, and host it from here in front of the museum and the civic center so they can use the washrooms and whatnot here. And so they've asked if they could use our tent for the day because they can't use it, potentially can't use the gazebo. So to take the risk out of it, I said we'd be happy to set a tent up for them and then they could start the event here. But it put their costs over the $200 threshold that I have. So, but it's all in kind. They're not looking for any cash. Um, and so I put it to council for a resolution. Councillor Bangley? I'll make a resolution that we do the in-kind donation to the Alzheimer's Society. Thank you. All in favor? Thank you so much. Okay, so the next one was at Tanya Thorne, and uh, uh, to determine the discussion of t uh, discussion topics, I think we probably will have more idea after the budget. <laughs> uh, yeah. There is a budget in two days, so I'm wondering if we should maybe uh, wait another week and then uh, bring it back. But I really feel that one of the questions that I have is why is it that we get a feeling that AUMA is showing maybe a more political side of themselves? If they could explain that to us. And is that intentional or is that the nature of the beast because uh, the government may be past and present and not building bridges sufficiently for communication? So I need to understand what is the knee jerking uh, way of doing business mm -hmm. at this point. So if that could be one of the requests. 
And also the other question that I have, for example, for the policing uh, whole issue of it, AUMA took it, took it upon themselves mm -hmm. to represent the voice of everybody, the municipality, without consulting with each municipality as to the impact. They took it as upon themselves that the AUMA vote was sufficient to give them the power. And yet we sent them a letter explaining to them that it was a risky proposition to pretend that it represented all of our voices. And now they're realizing that and it's not going very well. <clears throat> so I'd, I'd like to know that. Is there anything else you would like? Okay, so at least those two points. Yes, uh, Jeff. Uh, I, related to that, Mayor, I think I sent you an email that uh, AUMA is doing a a budget debrief on Friday yeah, at 2. Yeah, I'd like to see So this. I've registered. If anyone wants to come, we could throw it up here. If there's two or three, okay. we can throw it in my office. What time yeah. is that going to be? 2 o'clock. Yeah, so, yeah, I was, just, just come I was down wondering, to the are you going to... to can do. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Yeah, we can put it up here and watch it here. Or like I said, I got a big monitor in my office yeah. too. But I did. they only took limited registration, so I grabbed one of them. Well, I'm, um, I'm glad you did. And then we can watch that. Now, just yeah. also of interest in this discussion with policing, It'll be in the news tonight and tomorrow, but uh, Fort McLeod just let go both their peace officers in order to fund their rural policing initiative. Right. Oh my word, and so they've decided they, that they've done today, as of today, they no longer have a peace officer program. So that is my concern regarding that very issue. The whole model of financing, in my opinion, is so miserably flawed that it's going to cause more distress to municipalities in a sense that what we're there to do is protect the citizens, and now we're cutting down exactly where those people are to protect the towns. It bothers me. I don't know if any of you may have any influence on this as well, but a lot of things are bothering me right now with the, the government just doing away with contracts without just, we have a contract. No, you don't anymore. It's gone. All those things are starting to bother me, and I wonder if AMA, we could be under threat with our doctors, with our nurses, everybody well, that they're going um, after. I'm going to tell you that was one question that was uh, discussed at the Edmonton uh, Mayor's and uh, CAO meeting, and there was a recommendation made generally uh, for AUMA. You could see the letters that was written there uh, regarding those discussions. I'm not, Anyways. Sure I'm not sure what we're talking to Mr. Scow about, but that might be something we might want to discuss with them. Okay. Yeah. Like, like I say, AUMA has not done... Not tonight's counselor, but okay. we certainly could talk yeah. about okay. okay. Yeah. yeah okay. Now, there's quite a few items that need to be brought to the forefront, no doubt. And I can tell you that another one is um, Mayors and Reeves have taken also the liberty of writing the minister. Okay, so under the Kanai Transition Center Society Letter of Support, as you can see, there is a desire for the Kanai um, Transition Center to access grants from the government. And in order to do so, they want to know that the surrounding communities are there in support when there is placement and possibility of transitioning in uh, places uh, in towns for different workers. So we just need a, a resolution to... Well, we've, we've used the Kainai Transition Center in the past. We're yeah. going to use them again. Yeah. So I'd make a motion that we write that letter of support. Thank you. Questions? All in favor? Thank you very much. So the business arising from the delegation. So this is an interesting story because it's uh, what comes first, is the chicken or the egg or the egg of the chicken. So it appears to me that we need a little bit more information, first of all, as to how many lines exist. But as, I, as to my comments earlier, if the town 
was the one who created those lines and put them to their houses, I would say, Fairness would say, the town should take the responsibility. I don't know how you feel about it. Agreed. I agree. 100%. Well, no, I, I'm not disagreeing with you, Councillor. <laughs> Um, but a couple of points for consideration. I, did, I raised my hand at an inopportune time there, but uh, That's right. two things that Bart and I have discussed to consider. One thing we want to be careful of is that we recognize that water with no lead, but particularly less lead, is better and safer, and we don't want to make those who can economically afford to change things out be the ones to benefit from greater health. That seems like an unjust situation. That that the replacement of those lines becomes contingent on whether you can afford to pay for them. So that, that's something we're looking to avoid, but at the same time, the town's position on utility ownership and utility maintenance has been fairly clear over the last number of years. Uh, we had this debate with frozen water lines a couple of years ago. So we had a, a lot of debate around this issue of at what point does the delineation of ownership change? What we don't know is, yes, we're only going to do a small sample this year, but what if we find a high percentage of them have problems? And we're looking at thousands of dollars per property. I don't suspect we will, but what if we do? And so I understand, Mayor, it's a chicken and egg situation because if we think we're only going to see three of them in the whole community, yeah. it's not that difficult to say we'll replace them. Right. But what if there's 30? Uh, you're exactly right. Is, where is our... Our town responsibility yeah. and where is the capacity of the town to absorb it another another <clears throat> way is the way Bart proposed and I think is probably one of the maybe the fairest way because what happened 40 years ago good grief we don't know what I think the change in rate in utilities to recoup the infrastructure, not any different than what we do today when we have to replace infrastructure. That is maybe one way to look at it. So if I could touch on that, that's an interesting one because if we were to forecast, well, we know what the testing costs will be because that's a pretty easy equation. Right. And by the way, it's a little more than just 25 because of the shipping and all that right. stuff yeah. with it too, right? So it could roughly be 40 or $50 a home once you ship the samples. But whatever it is, Re easy calculation, no problem. We, we don't know, although we could extrapolate based on the sampling How what the overall houses? town could be, and then put those costs when we do our next utility rate analysis. Yeah. And is it reasonable to spread that over every utility user? That's the question that you would have to ask, because there's a political implication there, right? So that's for you to debate whether that's equitable, or is it more, <coughs> is it more fair nice. to say that... It's your home, it's your line, we'll help you by spreading that cost over, heck, five years monthly. So 60 months, for example, for this. Is that reasonable? Is that prohibitive? Because we don't want people to avoid making the repair for because they simply can't afford to make the repair. I mean, all that is based on so many if. Yep, it sure is. And so is... The best scenario is to all decide now that the town was responsible for putting those lines. The town is responsible for the infrastructure replacement. That's one way, which is mm -hmm. kind of factor it in. Or we as a council decide we will help the owners uh, with a certain amount of reduction in, in the utility bill or whatever it might be. I don't really know which could be the financial way of doing it. It's difficult to say you're going to get a rebate on your taxes. I don't really think that that's palatable and even allowable. Yeah. I'm not sure we could do but that. But I think maybe a grant or some kind of something. That's it could be a maybe per home a, subsidy. A mm. home subsidy, whatever we, we want to call it. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's still come back from the general funding of taxes. Yeah. Jeff, help me understand this because I'm I'm dumb as heck with this presentation. No, you're not. Now 
No we can put a, fo a filter. Apparently, Correct. we can have a company come in and install a point of entry at a, a filter system. And I understand from sources that that would cost about three hundred to five hundred dollars. Uh, Bart was saying between one to two hundred and something dollars. For okay. Simple so ones, yeah. what happens if we did that instead of changing the supply lines right. from the, from the stop to the to the property? That'd be a lot cheaper by by accessing a you know uh, these filters in a bulk com commodity. And then and having the homeowner pay for the installation of them, like we did with the uh, water uh, users, the uh, downgrade shower heads and stuff like that, uh, it would be a lot cheaper for our town to do that. Uh, and then, but what happens after that point of entry filter? Because my house is all copper. Yep. So you got solder, lead solder in the yeah. place. And, yeah. Yeah. And so I would have to look after that situation, but the but the point of entry is what I'm talking about from yeah. the cost to the town from bringing it from the curb stop into the into the property. But essentially, so, if you want to filter just before the tap, oh, oh yeah, I see what you're well, saying. One of the challenges with that is that the regulatory bodies see that as a stop gap only. Yeah. But that the goal is to remove the lead pipes. That's the goal. Yeah. And not to not to treat it indefinitely. Well, because that was my question. Right, Why exactly. not put the mixture right. in the water so we can stop talking right. about this? Exactly. Yeah. And he said, we cannot yeah. do that. We yeah. have to remove yeah. the pipes. Yeah, you period. have, you have to deal with the yeah. issue, yeah. not exactly. not do a band aid. So one thing, as I'm just sitting here, and maybe right. I'm understanding Ooh. a little bit of your challenges of, and 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 again, it's preliminary. And I don't know a lot about it either. But what if we? What if we decided to do a more aggressive testing to kind of understand six months from now what we were actually dealing with before yeah. we were making decisions on the kind of capital that we were waiving? What's this, what I think? That's what I was saying. What if we tried so to do, I, I hate to say it, because I, I don't know, but what if we tried to get 500 homes done by the end of the year and at least we had a good sampling that we could extrapolate and say, hey, in 500 we found one. Yeah. Or in 500 we found 10. Yeah. We and would, you know, use the older houses. That's who I'd go. Well, and Bart does want to start with the older homes because that's where your higher probability is going to be, right? In those <laughs> older homes. So, I think the the obligation on us right now is to commence testing. Start with mine. I have so an old house. Yeah, I have so, three old houses. Do do mine. Yeah. Well, again, we we'll, we go through them in some kind of systematic way. We can monitor and and keep track. But maybe what we need is just simply better data. Well, that's decision. what I we think. The, I think the then we yeah. will know how big the egg is. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I don't think it's that big. Jeff, you can put my name down that I would volunteer my services after I get my knees done, <laughs> you know, uh, that I would go around and take the samples too, and it'd be at no cost. Well, like I said, Bart, I think, I think we'd get good uptake if we said to the community, come to the town office, pick up the container, here's the process, bring it back. Sure. Okay. Yeah. I, I think you could have a couple hundred in a I couple agree. days. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. You know, pretty simple, because I'd want to know that. Absolutely. That's so important for me to know, right? Exactly. So should I talk with Bart about what, how aggressive on sampling could we be within the calendar year, not just 20? Because I know he said 20 and 20 and then 1,220, yeah. right, yeah. <laughs> in okay. the last year. Um, <laughs> yeah. Jeff, so. Jeff, can I suggest a few things? The there there yeah. is uh, the seniors, for example. Many of them are, are in older homes. They come, there are about 120 of them oh. that come. Let's say it represents 60 folks, a 60 a household. Yeah. It's already 60 household. If they were to bring 60 bottles right yeah. there, yeah. that could be distributed, labeled, and yeah. brought back. That would be already one way. There is another thing. You have public meetings. You know, there are different places where we could... Public meeting. Well, that's what I was just going to say. <laughs> right. They have 180 people show up, he said, to their yep. luncheon. Well, yeah. out of 180, okay, we've got couples in there, but still, that's yeah, probably but, uh, 80 houses. Yeah. Yeah. Like, bam, yeah. here's a water bottle. Bring it on back. What is, what, uh, <laughs> They're already okay. coming out. Yeah. Like, yeah, except some are from the I council. I just don't so think you, this is rocket you science. You have to eliminate them. Yes. Councilor Drew? No, I was just going to ask that same question. I just... Okay. And to make... 
for us to make a decision, we don't have to make a decision right away as to how we're going to do this. Yeah. We know we have to we, test. We have to test. Sure. Well, if our correspondent saying. simply says, here's the program, yeah. and once we have an idea of the severity or lack thereof of the program, we'd word it appropriately, then council will determine how they can work with the households to Agreed. for infrastructure change, but that'll be determined once we understand I think that the, will be the, 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 the wisest approach, okay. really, because the chicken is big. <laughs> if there's any issues with that, when I talk to Bart, I'll bring it back to CCW. Okay. Um, but we'll look and see how aggressive we could do a sampling within this year, within 2021. Thank you And we'll you have so to much. amend a little budget at mill rate time for, yeah. you know, if we want to do 500, well, then That's we got to have some pretty good money in there to take care of it. Okay. 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 All right. Thank you so much. All right, under aid committee and other reports, there are many uh, committees. There is uh, any questions you may have? The AGM for the Historical Society is tomorrow. They're always looking for new members, so 7 o'clock tomorrow if you can make I'll it there. there. I have no choice. <laughs> yeah, uh, unfortunately, t tomorrow, is, yeah. tomorrow is one thing. I might be able to do. Okay, 8B CAO report. So you can see we've been busy with Jeff at that uh, meeting when we went away. And uh, things are moving. We shall talk to you later, hopefully next month. We should have a better idea where we're going there. Okay, 8C. Peace officer reports, you can see the dogs are still an issue. It's absolutely amazing. I always wonder, are there the same dogs that are being uh, trapped and released yeah, and trapped lives, and released? Nine lives, they all been euthanized. <laughs> well, that must be because I see many, Keep coming back. many, many that seem to be uh, happy wandering in town still. So our peace officer is busy, quite busy as you can see. And the uh, nine questions, no questions. Okay, so let's move on. 10, 10A is stars, it's a thank you letter. 10B, custom rotaries, an invitation to the, something like the AGM kind of. And uh, it's a, it's Charter a night. roast beef. Charter night. Charter night, yes, yeah, same kind of idea. Yep. Is that? If I can. Go is, ahead. Is that something a member of council should go to? It's voluntary. It's, uh, it's, I know it is, but should it be? Would it be good for us to have a member of council go to it? If you would I'm like to I'm not saying me per se. I'm just, that, I'm just throwing that out. I just... I, so I never really have counted on council to be okay. there. Okay. To which one is that? The, the Rotarian. I think they like mm -hmm. us there at the Rotarian uh, fundraiser dinner which I mean, that I is went. always yeah. the dinner that one is more for people who are new inductees to the Rotary. this one you're saying is yeah oh, this okay is, this is their birthday party but i mean if you want to go there you're more than welcome it's not an official invitation no. okay. oh my God. Listen to Kim talk. 10 sc south draw regional economic development you could see there are many studies there that are done regarding the broadband and uh, Jeff that brings me back to a communication that you had regarding that special issue that Councillor Selk and then the Carlston Clinic there were those different plans where are we with all that? Yeah, so I think this is something, I, I got it from South Grove, so I put it in correspondence, but it'll be coming back when we talk more about fiber. Okay. So we just need to, Taylor Warwick was one of the groups that's, we're hoping give us another proposal on what it would look like to develop out our system. And then waiting, well, we'll work with ONET to see if they'll amend theirs as well. So I okay. haven't done a lot of it since we talked. I've okay. had a brief conversation with Ron. And, and that's about it at this point. All right. Well, thank, thank you. I just wanted to know where we were with all those talks. Uh, the Carson County 
It's uh, the land use bylaw notification. They're having about six different open houses. And I really hope that this open house on the land use will go well for them because last time it was not very pretty. So I really hope that the citizens will appreciate what has been done and uh, that they will ratify it. So, Mayor. Go ahead. Um, everybody's got this in the mail from the town, and I've had all kinds of people say, why do we get this? This is Carson yeah. County. What's it got to do with the town? Well, last... We have no say in their land use bylaws or anything like that, right? Because when you do a mail drop, everyone gets one. Okay. And, and in town, there are people who own property uh, in a county, too. Well, I guess I do, don't I? And so that brings me to the oh. end of the uh, public portion of our meeting. So we need to have a, a motion to move in closed chambers. Why don't you recess? We have some food. Oh, you do? And it's 6.30, 6.40. Oh, okay. Well, I did not know that. So I'll move to recess for 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Okay. So all in favor? Thank you very much. And thank you to the media. We covered a lot of ground today. Crumb and it's still early. Jill's here. So